Welcome to the video lesson for section 4.3, trig properties. Today we're going to look at some properties using our sine, cosine, and tangent functions. We're going to use them with some equations and some expressions to simplify. And we're also going to use them to solve some triangles. Let's get started. All right, we're going to start off with our reciprocal identities. To begin with, we talked about the fact that the sine and the cosine are reciprocals. Here we're going to kind of highlight that again. Looking at a reference angle of A down here at the bottom left, we can see the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, stated over here with a ratio. And since the cosecant is a reciprocal, it's going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite, which leads us to our two reciprocal properties. The cosecant is equal to 1 over the sine, whereas the sine is equal to 1 over the cosecant. And the way you'll see us using this is to help us rewrite expressions to kind of simplify things as we're walking through some trick proofs. We can see the same thing is true for our cosine and our secant. Again, they are reciprocals. So whereas the cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, the secant would be the hypotenuse over the adjacent, which would lead us to our two reciprocal identities for the cosine and the secant. Again, the cosine is 1 over the secant, whereas the secant is 1 over the cosine. And rounding out our reciprocal identities, we have the tangent and the cotangent. Once again, they are reciprocal, so we see our ratios here are flipped. And then for our reciprocal identities, the cotangent would then be 1 over the tangent of theta, whereas tangent would be 1 over the cotangent of theta. All right, we're going to go ahead and find the trig functions for our triangle. To begin with, though, we should state this is, in fact, a right triangle. Otherwise, we can't proceed and find the trig functions. If I want to start by finding my sine, we also need to know where we're starting. So I'm going to say our reference angle is down here at the bottom right. Otherwise, we might have the same ratios. For that angle, the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so it's going to be 9 over 15. If I want to take that ratio and help me find the cosecant, I would take the reciprocal, which would then be 15 over 9. For the cosine, I instead want to use the adjacent side, which is 12 over my hypotenuse of 15, which means for the secant, it would end up being 15 over 12. And then for my tangent function, it is the opposite side over the adjacent, which in this case is 9 over 12, which means my cotangent would have to be the reciprocal of 12 over 9. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and find the six trig functions for this triangle. Again, we're going to iterate that we have a right triangle, otherwise we can't proceed. Also, we're missing a side here. But hopefully you remember your Pythagorean theorem, which states a squared plus b squared equals c squared. c is going to be our hypotenuse. b is going to be our bottom side, which means we are missing our a value. If I go ahead and plug things in, then we have a squared plus 4 equals 36. Subtracting 4 on both sides, we get a squared equals 32, which means a is the square root of 32. And if I simplify that, we get a equals to 4 radical 2. So I now know my missing side. Now that I have all of my sides, I can go ahead and find my functions. We'll go ahead and start with the sine again. And this time, we're going to go ahead and start with this top corner here. So the sine of that function is going to be 2 over 6 which means that the cosecant of that same function would be 6 over 2, and I'll simplify that to be 3. If I look at the cosine, that's going to be 4 radical 2 over 6, which means that my secant would be 6 over 4 radical 2. And I'm not simplifying this, but I probably should to make it 2 thirds or 3 over 2. And then last but not least, for my tangent, that is going to end up being 2 over 4 radical 2, which I'll simplify as 1 over 2 radical 2, which means that for my cotangent, it would end up being just 2 radical 2. And again, I probably should have simplified my other values here. Uh, I didn't have a lot of space, so I did not. But I would get 1 third for the sine, 2 radical 2 over 3 for the cosine, and then 3 over 2 radical 2 for my secant. Now we're going to go ahead and solve for our triangle here. We know the sine of theta is 3 over 8. We also know that our reference angle is down here on the bottom right. So if I start there and I set up my sides, the sine is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which means I have 3 and I have an 8 there. To find our missing side, we're again going to use our Pythagorean theorem, which means I would have 9 plus b squared equals 64. If I subtract 9 on both sides, b squared is equal to 55, and then b is equal to the square root of 55, which we can't simplify. So I'll go ahead and leave it like that. 
And now we have our three sides, we can go ahead and find our the rest of our functions. Since we have the sine, we can already go ahead and use that to help us find the cosecant. We know it's a reciprocal, so it has to be 8 over 3. To find the cosine, we're going to take the adjacent side, which in this case is radical 55, and put that over your hypotenuse of 8. The secant is the reciprocal of that, which would be uh, 8 over radical 55. For our tangent function, it's going to be the opposite side, which is 3 over radical 55. And then for your cotangent, it's going to be the reciprocal of our tangent, so it should be radical 55 over 3. All right, same idea here. We are given the cosecant of our angle, and we know that our angle is, again, the same spot, the bottom right corner. The cosecant is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite side, which means that my hypotenuse is 17, my opposite side is 4. Again, we're going to go through our Pythagorean theorem to help us solve this for our missing side, which means we have 16 plus b squared is equal to 289. I'll subtract 16 on both sides to get 273, and then take the square root and we get b is equal to the square root of 273. So I'll put that down here. And now, because we have our sides, we can go ahead and find our missing functions. All right, again, we're going to go ahead and begin with finding our sine function. Because we know what the cosecant is, that means the sine should be the reciprocal, which in this case is going to be 4 over 17. For our cosine, we're going to start with our adjacent side, which is radical 273. And we'll go ahead and put that over 17. For the secant, we'll take the reciprocal of that value. So we have 17 over radical 273. For our tangent function, it's going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then last but not least, for our cotangent, it's going to be the reciprocal of our tangent. So we have radical 273 divided by 4. And then we have our six trig functions. All right, we have a word problem here. We're going to go ahead and try and solve for some missing information. We know we have a right triangle, so I'm going to go ahead and mark down my right angle. We have a hypotenuse of 15, and we have an angle of 42. The question is to find the other two angles and the other two sides. So I'm going to go ahead and label some things here. I'll call one side x, one side y, and we'll just call this z. The nice part about our missing angle is all three angles in a triangle add to be 180. And since I know that I have a right triangle, the other two angles have to be complementary. So to quickly find my z value, I could say that z is going, oops, I could say z equals 90 minus 42, which is then going to be 48 degrees. So I have found one of my missing angles. And now I'm going to try and identify x and y. To do that, I'm going to explicitly use 15 and 42 because those are the information given to me and there's no chance of error. If I somehow I calculated this 48 incorrectly and I used it, then I would have an answer that's even farther off than what it should be. So to start off with, I want to find x. To find x, I need to identify the relationship between my angle, x, and 15. So for 42, x is my opposite side, and 15 is my uh, hypotenuse, which means I would try and solve this using the sine function. So I can go ahead and set up my relationship as the sine of 42 is going to equal x over 15. And then to finish solving this, I would multiply 15 on both sides, which means I have 15 times the sine of 42 is going to equal x. Now to finish this problem, we're going to use our calculator. And it's very important you have it in degree mode because your, cal your angle is also in degrees. So if I type it into my calculator and I have the right mode, then for my answer, I end up getting 10.04. Okay, so I'm going to write that here under x. And then now we need to try and find our y value. It is tempting to go ahead and solve using your Pythagorean theorem, but because our x value was rounded, we can't really use it to find our y value. So for our y value, notice that we have the adjacent side to our angle and a hypotenuse, which means I'm going to start by using my cosine. So I have cosine of 42 is going to equal y over 15. Again, I multiply both sides by 15, so this time I have 15 times the cosine of 42 is equal to y. Again, we plug this into our calculator. You want to make sure you're in degree mode because your angle is in degrees. And I got an answer of 11.15 approximately. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that here. 
And one thing we can kind of do to double check here, my angle Z was 48 degrees, which is bigger than 42, which means the side opposite should also be bigger than the side opposite of 42 degrees. So since Z is bigger than 42, Y should be bigger than X. And that definitely happened. So I know at least that checks out. My answers are probably right. All right, here we have a surveyor who is standing 50 feet from the base of a large tree. He measures the angle of elevation to the top of the tree to be 71.5 degrees. So that's our angle here. And here's the 50 degrees he is from the tree. The question that we have is how tall is the tree? So we're looking for this distance here, which I'm going to go ahead and call H because it's the height of the tree. We're going to look at the relationship we have set up and decide if we should use sine, cosine, or tangent. Looking at our angle, we know that our H is our opposite. 50 is going to be the adjacent. So since we have opposite and adjacent, we're going to start by solving this with the tangent function. So I could say that the tangent of 71.5 is going to equal H over 50. I would then multiply both sides by 50. So we have 50 times the tangent of 71.5 equals H. If you go ahead and multiply that together in the calculator, again, making sure that you have your calculator in degree mode, then we get approximately 149.4 feet as our height of the tree.